Hello, and welcome back to Meerkat Chris. Solo, a Star Wars story. The second standalone slash anthology film in the Star Wars saga, following on from 2016's Rogue One. This time literally telling the story of a younger Han Solo becoming THE Han Solo we all know and love from A New Hope. Well, kind of. I'm going to be talking about the three things I liked and the three things I eh, didn't really like as much about Solo. So yes. Let's get started with the first good thing. And that, fortunately, is Alden Einreich. How do you say his name? Alden Einreich as Han Solo. Yep, the main star of the narrative. And I'm happy to admit that I pretty much loved him in the role. He's ambitious, determined, and smug. He thinks a lot of himself. He's not quite the Han Solo we know just yet. He's about 10 years off at this point and is in a position where he feels a bit underused, to say the least. And you know, leading up to this film, it felt like everybody hated the idea that this Alden Ironrick was playing the younger Harrison Ford. But me personally, I was always skeptical about it, thinking more along the lines of that I'd rather wait and see to see if he can really embody the character of Han Solo and give us more of a young and fresher take on Han Solo rather than just, you know, literally looking like Harrison Ford whilst trying their best to do an interpretation of him as Han Solo. Yeah, I'll admit it, Alden was the best part of the film for me. He was fun, energetic, and actually one of the very few actually genuinely funny characters in it. And I'd even go as far as to say that he captured the spirit of Han Solo more so than they did in The Force Awakens. I think if I had to state what was my favourite aspect of him as Han Solo in this film, it was probably that he was really truly deeply a good guy at heart. Even if he so desperately tries to fit in with the criminal friends he has around him. First bad thing? That was whilst I did enjoy watching Han on screen and seeing him get into all these crazy scenarios, the film overall fell really flat to me. To me, the narrative was mainly held together by a string of endless explanations as to how Han met the people and got the stuff that he had in the original trilogy. It came off as more of an overly excited child telling their parents the stories of how Han Solo from A New Hope got all the cool stuff that he had in that film without adding too much in between all of that. I personally would I wouldn't have minded it as much if we actually had some sort of a story that was incredibly different to what we already knew and gave us something new to think of and reflect on about Han Solo as a person. And whilst there are a few good small examples of this, including the likes of his relationship with Kira and how exactly he met Chewie, which I thought was kind of cool, at the end of the day I just can't see enough effort being put into the narrative. Next good thing, although there was a large chunk of the film that I'd consider forgettable or just not all that engaging to begin with, there were a few quite quieter scenes in the film that I really admired. A little bit spoilery, but it's, it's within the first 10 minutes, I, I don't know, it's just something I liked, okay? I only really got interested once Kira had been captured and taken away from Han, because up until this point I'd already bought into the fact that Han really cared for her and enjoyed and needed to be in her company, and then to suddenly have her taken away from him was rather upsetting. I also felt that burning energy inside of me, because I wanted Han to be able to save her or something, but knowing that he couldn't and is instead just left alone and kind of vulnerable. I just really got engaged into what was going on in the screen. And at the same time, I thought that was a side of Han Solo that we hadn't really seen up until this point before. I mean, we've had little aspects of it towards like Leia and such, but I haven't really seen him this vulnerable and scared before. I also really enjoyed the tension scenes between Han, his friends, and Crimson Dawn. Putting Han in a small room with these people, trapped with this unsettling and evil guy, was a highlight of the film for me. I was actually really into that sort of thing. Second bad point is that the pacing was very off to me at times. It was kind of uneven throughout. Now this may have something to do with the mix up of directors and such, but I just didn't really care for the majority of the action scenes, including the big heist stuff. I just felt a large disconnect from what was going on. I'm not too sure why though. It might have had something to do with the fact that the film does literally just jump straight into action scenes to begin with and then like for the first 30 minutes it's just action scenes after action scenes after action scenes without really giving us enough downtime to get to know and relate to these characters and then to obviously care for them at the same time. I think this might differentiate between person to person because I know that a lot of people actually do claim the first half hour to be the most entertaining of the entire film so 
that might have just been me. Because to me, scenes only really picked up when it was characters pitted against each other. It might also at the same time have something to do with me being really tired because I did go to the midnight screening of this and maybe I was just too tired. I, I'm not too sure. Uh, next point is the third and final good point. I actually loved the overall aesthetic of the film. Of course it's Star Wars. When you think of Star Wars you think of like the gritty down to earth and realistic looking atmosphere and all these used and lived in worlds and this has a lot of that to offer and it's just fun to see it. I also really admired the darker visuals which to me really helped sell the idea that these characters are underground criminals doing the dirty work. And seeing the Millennium Falcon whilst it was still in really good condition was also just really fun. I always like to see how things age over time and I like to see a direct comparison between the two and I don't know, the Millennium Falcon being one of my favourite things, it's just it's just really cool to see. It might be a nostalgia thing but I can't lie, I, I really like that sort of thing. I actually also really like the addition of explaining how Han didn't actually spend much time with his father when he was a kid, as his father was a way a lot. And part of that was actually because his father helped build the YT-1300 uh, light freighter series, which is what the Millennium Falcon is part of. They also explain how Han Solo has a fond memory of boarding one of these YT-1300 freighters with his father when he was younger. And although it might sound a little too on the nose to begin with, I think it does really help deepen the reasons as to why Han seems to have such an emotional attachment to this particular series of ships. And the final bad point would have to be the score. Although nothing particularly bad, I mean some of it's actually pretty good, because there are actually a few noticeable new tracks in the film. There's also like, there's a weird chanting going on at one point and I thought, whoa, this is in a Star Wars film? It's mainly a problem I have with the new Disney era Star Wars films in general. Even with the likes of John Williams on these films, I wouldn't really say that many of the new scars really stand out, and I wouldn't particularly put them up there with the likes of the original trilogy or even the prequel trilogy scars, because a large part of what actually makes Star Wars Star Wars, to me at least, is the scarring. It's just as important to me as the gritty lived in aesthetic. I mean it might sound a little bit nitpicky but I do really need these new scars to sound loud and overwhelming and really captivate me. And to me a lot of the action scenes in Solo as well as a few of the other films in general just feel a little too underwhelming. There are a few callbacks to the original trilogy scores in Solo as well as some of the new scores here and there and I have to say that those are still the ones that stand out to me whether it's just because I recognise them or whatnot, they're the ones that captivate me in the moment and get me pumped into the scene. The same goes for the other films including The Force Awakens as much as I enjoy the Ray theme and all that. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe I need to settle down and understand that these are new films and I have to really listen to what these scores are actually saying in these scenes. Like I said, they're still good and actually they're still better than half the things we hear in other films. I don't know, maybe I'm looking too into it. I mean, it is still an entertaining film at the end of the day for the most part. So yes, my overall rating for Solo, a Star Wars story, is a 6.0 out of 10. Yeah, like I said, I still like it, but I don't really think it warrants its existence in the end, and that is a bit of a problem to me. Although, adding on to that, I do actually think that this is a film that you could probably go and see if you're not really a fan of Star Wars in general. Uh, you don't really have to have seen any of the other films, or even really care about them that much either, because at the end of the day, it is still a funnish adventure that's just about a heist and such. Anyway, yeah, so that's the end of my video. I hope you guys kinda enjoyed it. Have you guys seen Solo a Star Wars film? And yes, I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Hello and welcome back to Mia Cat Chris. Hello Kathleen. Oh, you can hear me. Uh